our directions are to write each expression in terms of sines and our cosines and then simplify. Um, I'm assuming that you meant to put parentheses around the 1 plus tangent squared of x and then the secant squared of x minus 1 um, because otherwise, you know, the plus 1 and the minus 1 would just cancel out. Um, so um, I wrote it over here as, as I think you meant it to be. Um, if I'm incorrect, I'm sorry about that. Uh, so we have 1 plus tangent squared x in the numerator and secant squared of x minus 1 in the denominator. So if we convert those into sine and cosine, which I already did, tangent of x is sine x over cosine x. So tangent squared x is going to be sine squared x over cosine squared x. And secant of x is the reciprocal of the cosine function. So secant squared x is going to be 1 over cosine squared x. So here we are now in terms of sine and cosine. And we're then asked to simplify. Well, we have a rational expression. We have small fractions inside of a big fraction. And one way to simplify that is to look at each of the little denominators, which in this case is a cosine squared x in the little denominator of the numerator, and there's a cosine squared x in the little denominator in the denominator, right? So if we look at those, we can determine a least common denominator of the numerator and the denominator, which in this case is going to be the cosine squared of x. So I multiplied both the numerator and the denominator by that cosine squared of x. And this is a legitimate move because the cosine squared of x divided by the cosine squared of x is 1, and multiplying by 1 doesn't change your values. So what's really going to happen here is that the entire first numerator is going to be multiplied by cosine squared x, and the entire first denominator is also going to be multiplied by cosine squared x. So we have a distributive property going on. So if we multiply that through, distributing 1 times cosine squared x is cosine squared x. That should be squared x, sorry about that. And plus, let me get rid of that and rewrite that. Cosine squared x, all right. Plus, when we take sine squared x over cosine squared x, when we multiply that by cosine squared x, those cosine squared x's are just going to cancel out. So what we are left with is the sine squared of x. So in essence, we eliminated the fraction in the numerator. Same thing could happen in the denominator. If we take 1 over cosine squared x and we multiply it by cosine squared x, cosine squared x is cancel, and we get 1. Minus... We're going to take 1 times cosine squared x, which is a cosine squared x. Much nicer. We still have a fraction, but we don't have small fractions within the big fraction. Okay? So if we now look at what we have in Simplify, the numerator is cosine squared of x plus sine squared of x, which is one of our identities, and that is equal to 1. And in the denominator, we have 1 minus cosine squared x, which is also one of our identities. And 1 minus cosine squared x is the same as sine squared x. So we, we have simplified it, and we could leave it here. However, this is a reciprocal function. The reciprocal of sine squared of x is cosecant squared of x. So we can take 1, minus, 1 over sine squared of x and rewrite that as cosecant squared of x. All right, so hopefully this has been helpful for you, and have an awesome day.